Hello again, this is Jake. Today, well, let's find out together what makes up the blockchain governance. There are four main components. There are consensus algorithms, node structures, governance bodies, and on-chain and off-chain governance. These four factors are essential elements in building blockchain governance, and their impact is great for governance to operate. The first thing I will talk about is consensus algorithm. Depending on the type of consensus algorithm, it is sometimes impossible to build a governance organization. Representatively, there is POW. In order to have someone to vote, you need to know who is going to participate to vote. But there is a problem that POW cannot determine who to grant for voting. This is because it is difficult to specify which nodes will be given voting rights. For example, assuming that the voting schedule has been decided on March 20th, 2022. Countless computers can intentionally create nodes to participate in the vote before the voting date. POW has no restrictions on node participation, so it is an environment where manipulation can happen too easily even if voting is successfully done. Because of this environment, POW is not suitable for building a governance. On the other hand, in the case of PBFT algorithms, nodes with voting rights can be clearly specified because participating nodes are clearly determined. That's why PBFD is an easy environment to establish a governance organization. And usually many projects adopt POS based on PBFD. And in the case of POS, token governance can be constructed around participants who participated in staking tokens. Voting rights are given in response to the amount of token deposited. People who deposit are those who hold tokens for a long time because uh, they usually deposit them for more than a certain period of time. So we can identify the people who participated in staking as a groups that have formed interest with the community over a certain period of time. Therefore, it is possible to organize the governance of the token economy centered on those who participated in staking. DPoS is a further reduced version of POS in its number. Since DPoS is a delegated structure, people who are actually delegated authorities by the community make decisions. DPoS has advantage of being easier to operate governance than POS. On the other hand, democracy weakens because it's delegation structure. As such, each consensus algorithm has effects on the government. The second component of governance I'm going to talk about is the node structure. Node operators also play a very important role in the blockchain ecosystem. As their role is important, they work with corresponding responsibilities and authority. For example, suppose that we have made a new policy, let's apply A from now on. When you ask to update a specific function to the next version, node operators must reflect the updates on their computers through code updates. Let's think about the case where the node operator says, no, I don't like what was decided earlier. I don't agree with it. And obviously, I won't even update it. In this case, there may be cases where decisions cannot be executed even after decisions are made. In fact, there were cases where participants made decisions in EO's project, but the node refused. If the node operator's authority is overwhelmingly strong within the blockchain ecosystem, this kind of incidence could happen easily. Therefore, the node structure can be seen as a fundamental factor in constructing governance. There are cases of creating explicit governance bodies. There are Tezos, and you can also see those cases in Cardano. Protocon will also create a governance body when we open our mainnet. All important decisions regarding the blockchain ecosystem will be discussed and decided here. In general, blockchain governance proceeds in the form of voting. Voting is most commonly used as a structure that leads to a consensus among members. Bitcoin, Ethereum, one of the most represented blockchains, 
sets the direction of the networks through BIP, EIP, and develop forums and various communities. In addition, various projects are governing the network in different ways. Proposals are raised in the voting agenda and decisions are made within the community through voting are reflected. However, even if the blockchain governance bodies make decisions, even if it doesn't have the final control over the node, there may be cases where the node refuse to update and the updates are not executed. So Tezos has an on-chain governance structure that automatically reflects decisions when the issue is confirmed through voting results. It can be said to be a protocol-operated governance. On-chain governance refers to a form in which governance can be achieved inside the chain without any other elements except for the blockchain network component. Blockchain networks in on-chain governance can be seen as completeness as an independent word. Conversely, if governance is done outside the network and it directly affects the inside of the blockchain network, this form of governance can be said to be off-chain governance. Simply put, on-chain governance takes place within the blockchain. In on-chain governance, developers, users, and node operators all participate evenly and policy decisions and modifications are made mainly by voting. Off-chain governance is a structure in which consultations outside the blockchain are reflected in the blockchain. On-chain governance has advantage of increasing community cooperation in that it forms an environment in which various users can continue to participate in the governance process. However, once the decision is made, it is difficult to change it afterwards. This is reasonable in that once reflected in the network based on the irrevisibility, which is the core of the blockchain, it cannot be easily modified and changed. But whether it is also the target of hackers attack by exploiting this point. This is because even if some defects are found in the code, rapid correction cannot be made immediately. Rather, the vulnerability of the network is revealed on the surface, making it difficult to maintain a certain level of security. Nevertheless, in on-chain governance, proposals, decisions, and enforcement work as a single system. So when voting is completed, nodes are automatically updated, minimizing the cases of distorting or not executing voting results. However, on on-chain governance, it's actually very difficult to implement technology, so it is often impossible to develop it. Even if you have a plan, it takes a very long time to implement it. Protocol goal is to go all the way to constructing on-chain governance. Based on the governance components I informed you earlier, I will compare them with various blockchains. Bitcoin is a POW algorithm because the node operator cannot be specified and an explicit decision-making structure cannot be created. Bitcoin is a structure in which nodes that use a lot of power or spend a lot of money can take the right to make decisions. In this respect, it is similar to gangster politics. It is a structure where you have power with an organization, you will have a great influence, and you can force any decision. The current Ethereum also works as a POW algorithm just like Bitcoin. However, unlike Bitcoin, it has a structure of rule of philosophers led by Vitalik Buterin, the leader of the project. Of course, Vitalik Buterin doesn't decide everything arbitrarily by himself. Public opinions has also been collected and important issues are being decided according to what the majority agree. Ethereum does not have an explicit governance structure, but instead has a community. When Vitaly Buterin suggests going in a certain direction, most of them follow it. This can be called a kind of a rule of philosophical politics. The project called Dash is now less recognized, but it was in the top 20 two to three years ago. In this project, POS structures was mixed with POW. Direct democracy was realized in the form of giving governance authority to those who took participate in POS. Dash introduced a policy called Masternode 
where it made decisions. Ethereum 2.0 has yet to talk about the explicit governance. Since Ethereum has a structure with uh, staking tokens, there is an open possibility of giving one person one vote of governance participation to those who are participating in staking. There's no special ideas yet, so we would have to wait and see the updates. As I said earlier, Tezos is working on the project by raising issues very proactively in terms of governance. Tezos has a plan to govern all on on-chain, and they are seriously implementing one by one for these plans. What's unusual about Tezos is that it offers one vote per one token. There are two main structures in shareholder capitalist politics. There is one share one vote and one person one vote. One vote per share is mainly adopted by corporations. The downside is that it can be called plutocracy. One token, one vote here is almost same as one share, one vote. Then one token, one vote can be seen as plutocracy. In this case, interests of those who hold tokens become dominant. In many cases, plutocracy doesn't really help the long-term development of the projects. For example, a person within 51% can ignore the opinion of 10, 100,000 people with a 49% proportion. Tezos unusually adopts one token, one vote, but more than 80% have to participate in the vote, and more than 80% of the participants must agree to pass the agenda. The concept of a majority agreement can be seen as an example of this application. Destruction which requires overwhelming majority to agree, prevents the minority from dominating the majority's opinion, solving much of the shortcomings that relaxed politocracy may have. In a way which is more central than shareholder capitalism, where 20 nodes are in the form of aristocratic politics. MakerDAO can also be seen as a kind of plutocracy structure. Since one vote per one share is applied here, here is still a possibility of plutocratic politics. And because the structure of one token, one vote is simple, it is easy to operate a blockchain governance structure. For that reason, Protocon will also be adopting this structure. So finally, let me talk about the Protocon governance. Protocol will open the best decision making body called Congress and in time for the opening of Mainnet. The authority to participate in decision making in Congress is granted to those who have deposit pen in FIFI. If you are wondering what FIFI is, please refer to my earlier video explaining about FIFI. The principle of agreement is based on one token, one vote. We have adopted a structure that benchmark Tezos and makes majority agreements on important decisions. As I said earlier about Tezos, if the majority is 51%, may the major consensus structure reflects the structure of passing decisions only when there is a larger number of agreements than 51%. Protocol intends to introduce two decision-making structures in parallel for efficient decision-making. The first is a structure of a majority agreement through delegation of authority to make decisions on daily issues. If several people have to participate and vote for one or two issues every time, the decision making and execution process will be never be efficient. We will have to wait for everyone to vote and make decisions based on the results of the vote. But these processes take a long time and are not simple. In this voting process, the problem of participation rate can also can be an issue. So in order to enable authorized representatives in governance to make and execute decisions quickly, we will make decisions through delegation of authority on some minor decisions. The second is decision making through the plurality agreements on significant issues. Decision making and changes that are important enough to have a big or small impact on everyone in the ecosystem must reach an agreement. Let's take an example of changing a rule. For example, suppose that there are issues that are sensitive enough to conflict interests such as changing the block size or something else that is significant. In this case, 
the plurality agreement structure can be established by adopting Tezos consensus earth structure, which requires more than 80% approval from more than 80% of quorum. About 80% of agreements can be seen as an absolute will of the community. For reasonable and efficient decision-making system, Protocol will be adopting these two decision-making structures. Furthermore, there is a way to categorize proposals and just then decide who will have more voting rights for each proposal. For example, by adjusting technicians to exercise more voting rights on technical issues, we can prevent people who have little to do with the technical issues from promoting irrational decisions to others. In addition to the characteristics of blockchains, we looked at the various contents under the theme of blockchain governance. The reason why I'm talking on YouTube through this Insight Protocol is to convey that our Protocol project is working on the project with the awareness of the various problems. And through this time, I want to tell you that what direction we are going to take and how we are going to move forward to achieve the milestones that is ahead of us. The next time I'll come back with more useful information through uh, Inside Protocol Chapter 3. Thank you for watching and happy Protocol everyone. Protocol이 궁금하다면 좋아요, 구독, 알림 설정까지.